the entrance antiphon. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exult over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living, I will, I will walk, walk before, before the, the Lord, Lord in the land, land of the living. I believed, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? 
Is it God? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. In this Gospel passage of the Transfiguration, we see the identity of Jesus. He is God's beloved Son. There is an intimate connection between God the Father and God the Son. We see this identity earlier in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 1 at Jesus' baptism, where God says to Jesus, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. On the day of our baptism, God enters into a personal relationship with each of us, seeing us as his beloved son, as his beloved daughter. For Jesus, knowing that he is God's beloved, fully confident in his Father's love, he is able to undertake his mission in the world and to face humiliation, suffering, and his ultimate death on the cross. The challenge for us is to not forget our own identities as beloved daughters and sons of God. This can happen when we feel unlovable, totally lost in our sins, as unworthy. But despite all of this thinking, we always remain as the chosen of God, God's beloved children. It is only through claiming our true identities as God's children that we can resist temptation and sin to help us face the challenges of another day. St. John reminds us that God is love. And so when God tells Peter, James, and John to listen to his son, he's also saying those words to us. Despite all of our weaknesses and failings, God looks at us through the eyes of love as his very own. On the day of a child's baptism, I suggest to the parents and godparents that as the waters are being poured on the child's head, God is saying to them, remember, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter. And I also believe that God is saying that as a reminder to the child's parents and godparents. The sacrament of baptism reminds them that God is pleased with them for bringing their child to become closer to his son. Let's make it our Lenten goal that when we feel discouraged, when we believe that we are not as kind or as patient as we should be, when we feel so overwhelmed, we must remember that God loves us with the same love as he loves us. 
In today's gospel about the transfiguration, Jesus is telling us that we are the beloved of his heavenly Father. We too must listen to his words. And if we do, then we too can transfigure that piece of the world entrusted to our care. God bless you. Together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. St. Paul assures us that God is for us. Therefore, we give voice to our needs and hopes, confident that God who loves us will hear us. For the church, that God's generosity to Abraham and his descendants might motivate us to share our blessings with those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations on the earth, that they may find blessing in their people, as God promised Abraham, and value even the least among them as the handiwork of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. For the world, that it may be transfigured by the presence of God, becoming a world of perfect justice, mercy, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are suffering in the current outbreak of sickness, for those who have experienced loss, and for all scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who are serving others in this difficult time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. For the sick of our parish and all who care for them, especially Joan McAuliffe, Jerry and Odalis Nocera, Bob McGowan, Dr. Robert Gallarenzo, Patrick Sweeney, Marcelo Gualda, Scott Brzezinski, John Gallagher, Chris Diaino, Charlie Landers, Mary Diaino, and for all those listed in the bulletin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, especially Patricia Mux, mother of Paul Mux, Linda Rambot, and Frasia Carvajal, may they rest in peace with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember in a special way our parish family for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For the intentions we hold in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we look to you in our need and listen closely to hear your voice. Hear these prayers we make today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. The communion antiphon. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Next weekend is Pledge Weekend for the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal. Please prayerfully consider making a gift. Our target goal is $97,094. Please complete and return next weekend the pledge envelopes that you received in the mail, or you can pick one up at the Power Center or in the vestibule. You can also make your gift online. Be sure when you submit your pledge to the Archdiocese, you indicate that you are a parishioner of MBS Franklin Lakes. If we achieve our goal in funds received by June 30th, MBS will have a 2% reduction in archdiocesan assessment for the next year. We would be saving the parish over $18,000. Therefore, in addition to helping the needs of the archdiocese, like Catholic Charities, you would also be helping MBS. In addition, we will receive 100% of every dollar raised over the target goal. Please read my letter in this week's bulletin for more information. We thank you for your continued assistance with this appeal, and please make it a part of your Lenten journey. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory, whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.